Hi, uh, I'm Michelle Major Goldsmith from Kinetic IT in Australia, and with me is my colleague Simon Dorst. In this video, we want to tell you a bit more about the second edition of the Siam Foundation Body of Knowledge, which was recently released on April the 1st, 2020, together with the accompanying process guides. We'll provide an overview of which sections of the BOC have changed, the reason behind it, and an insight into the new content. We'll also provide two other videos, one about the history of the box and the process used to create the second edition, and another one specifically about what has been added or changed in the professional box. So a lot of time has passed since the initial concepts of the Scion Bodies of Knowledge was conceived, and a lot has changed in that time, especially the foundation box, which was released first and written in 2016. Since then, our understanding of Scion has further advanced, and so has the market, with organisations demanding more agile approaches to service delivery and new and updated practices and frameworks released to cater for this. Now, the second edition of the Bodies of Knowledge was always considered to be a refresh, whereby we did not want to rewrite the Siam theory from scratch, but rather build on its foundation, updating sections with additional guidance and adding recent advances. And this was particularly the case for the foundation body of knowledge, which, as the name implies, is the foundation of the Siam theory and the basis for the equivalent qualification. And as such, we were very happy to discover that the vast majority of the foundation body of knowledge had stood the test of time and was still relevant and applicable. In fact, most of the changes had to be made in this section four, which deals with other practices, as there had been significant changes in those. First up, there's ITIL which in the original body of knowledge was still version 3. But since the publication of the Scion body of knowledge, ITIL 4 was released in 2019, and the service lifecycle has been replaced with a more flexible service value chain, as well as the service value system. ITIL 4 also introduces the four dimensions instead of the four Ps, and the guiding, guiding principles, which fit really well in the body of knowledge description of a cooperative culture aimed at improving service delivery. But perhaps the biggest change in ITIL 4 is the use of generic practices rather than the more specific processes. And we did think about whether to apply this change through other sections of the SIAM body of knowledge as well. But in the end, the SIAM concept of a process model kind of fits neatly between the old ITIL version 3 description of a process with often defined procedures and work instructions and a more generic concept of a practice that is applicable across the whole organization, including all service providers. So outside of this section, which is specifically about ITIL 4 and its terminology, we've maintained the use of the term process, as in a SIAM context, this was never about prescriptive documentation, but rather about the collaborative model of achieving customer-based outputs. And apart from the new ITIL 4, the service management landscape has also changed with the introduction of a whole new methodology in 2018 with the introduction of Verism. Verism is both an acronym, value-driven, evolving, responsive, integrated service management, and a defined term. Verism means truth in art. It's also very SM. Verism was created by the International Foundation for Digital Competency, or the IFDC. If we take a look at this diagram, this is the model for Verism. It's actually remarkably similar to the new ITIL 4 service management system with governance, principles, service value chain, activities leading from consumer demand to consumer value. But all of this was thought of and published well before ITIL authors even started to think about the new structure. The big point of difference here with Verism is the management mesh which meshes or glues to get technologies and practices together. Next on our list of refreshed other practices is the ISO 20000 standard. Not only had the standard been updated since the original release of the SIAM Foundation book, but we also found it was somewhat restrictive to focus only on this standard, whereas there are so many other standards which potentially could provide a benefit when developing a SIAM environment. So this section now describes various ISO standards, although it still highlights the ISO 20000 standard as specifically applicable, as after all, this is the standard for service management. 
There was also a change in COVID, which has been updated from COVID-5 to COVID-2019. Now, these changes were actually relatively minor for the descriptions used in the foundation book, but we had to make sure that all the text was still relevant, accurate, and if necessary, aligned to the new COVID-2019 practice. And this was also the case with the sections on Lean, DevOps and Agile, which required some minor updates to ensure the text provided was aligned to the accurate description and application of these practices. For instance, for Lean, we tightened the definitions of the waste types to be more aligned to the traditional Toyota descriptions. And for DevOps, we introduced the comms values, which can be used to help adapt DevOps for a Siam ecosystem. And it shows the synergies between these two practices. COM stands for culture, automation, lean, measurement and sharing. These are all important concepts and values in both DevOps and Siam. Not too much changed in the Agile section, but we did want to have a bit more of an explanation around the concepts of Agile with a small a versus Agile as a group of frameworks and methods, as well as the concept of agility. This makes the whole of section four a must read for those people that previously have already read the first release of the Scion Foundation Body of Knowledge. There's also significant change in section eight on the challenges and risks when developing a Scion environment. We have always applauded the idea of the BOC not only providing common sense theory on why Scion is such a great practice, but to also discuss the potential pitfalls and challenges when attempting this and even give a hint around the risk and mitigations. But in the old version of the foundation book, there were no less than nine different sections of challenges, and some of these seem to be somewhat repetitive. For instance, the challenge of legacy contracts and that of commercial challenges had a significant overlap, and we've merged the first with the latter. And similarly, the challenge of behaviors and that of culture fit had similarities, and again, we've merged these. And finally, the challenge of trust and micromanagement overlapped with the earlier challenges around the level of control and ownership, and these two have also been combined. The outcome is that we've managed to rationalize the number of challenges from nine to six without really losing any of the theory and content previously provided. And for those interested in the details, we've highlighted the sections of the challenges that have been updated and merged. So that is a, a quick insight into the main updates in the refreshed second edition of the Science Foundation Body of Knowledge, mainly in sections four on the other practices and section eight on the challenges. Overall, we've done some minor updates on the text, mainly around consistency across the publication, as well as with the terminology used in the professional body of knowledge, which was released afterwards. Like, for instance, the list of acronyms. We've also added a foreword from the lovely Claire Agata. Now, with the foundation body of knowledge, there was an accompanying set of process guides, which have also been included in the scope of the second edition refresh. Firstly, we did not want to make this publication specific to the foundation body of knowledge, but more standing on its own. So we removed the foundation part out of its title. Having said that, this publication is still part of the syllabus for the Exim BCS SIAM Foundation qualification. In other words, both the SIAM Foundation book and the process guide form a part of this. In the actual process guide, the changes were relatively minor, although for some reason we had completely overlooked the process for request management and also some of the outputs for continual service improvement process. And these have now been added. We've also added the odd role activity or changes to input output for other processes. But in general, this is more a refinement than a change of the existing text. And there you have it, two refreshed second edition publications, which are now available as a free download from the Scopism website. The good news is that Exim BCS Foundation qualification remains valid, and those that have already obtained this qualification do not have to resit or upgrade that qualification. They may, of course, want to download this new second edition and read the update sections for their own SIAM understanding. And that concludes this video on the changes in the second edition of the Siam Foundation Body of Knowledge. We hope you enjoyed this and perhaps that you watch one of our other videos explaining the second edition in general 
or the more specific changes to the professional body of knowledge. Thank you for watching.